ordinary, you know, little little quarrel over drugs. The intelligence of our people in charge is worse than it's ever been. They're not intelligent. They don't use their minds. They don't analyze anything. I mean, why, do they, why are they collecting millions of phone calls and phone numbers and all of that? They don't know what to do with them when they have them. They say that they've prevented uh, terrorist attacks, but they don't tell us which ones have been prevented. The ones that we know were prevented were done by people on airplanes, like the shoe bomber, or the underwear bomber in, in Detroit. And, uh, and a few others like that were done by P uh, and the and the Times Square one. You hear was a car in Times Square loaded with, with explosives, and the man it was a street vendor who saw smoke coming out of the car and stopped that conflagration. So the people in charge, in the Obama administration, you've got rank amateurs running the United States of America, and they are running us to the ground. I mean, this man, he lies through his teeth. He said, he talked about a red line for Syria. You all heard that? He mentioned that Sarah. Now he says, oh, I never said red line. The world said red line, you know. I guess he's preparing to make some kind of a decision. We don't know what kind of a decision he's going to make. But he may very well start World War III. We don't know. <laughs> this guy hasn't a clue. Why? Do you know what his profession was before he became a, a state senator? He was a community organizer. <laughs> you have to be a socialist in order to be a community organizer because that whole I, that whole job was created by Saul Alinsky, the communist in Chicago, who said you need community organizers to politicize the illiterates, politicize the underclass. You see, that's, what he, that's why he won the election. Obama knew how to get the underclass, the illiterates, to the polling booths. He gave them free cell phones, he gave them money. God knows what else, uh, what kind of gifts were given to these people, because these people generally are not interested in politics. I mean, they've been dumbed down beyond belief. I mean, they're, they're, um, they're idiots. <laughs> and, uh, and we support them now, you know, all on the dole. And it's the 45% of working Americans who are now paying for all of this. Because in the last election, it was shown that the majority, which includes the dumbed down, the illiterates, and the underclass, now are in the, minority, are in the majority. And if you get them to the polls, and, and as a community organizer, that was Obama's job in Chicago. So he was a professional community organizer in Chicago, and he applied those same techniques when he became president. That's why he's continually campaigning. You know, he's always in a campaign mode. He's never, he's never being presidential. He's being a candidate all the time, raising money. As a matter of fact, he had to forego a, a, a new fundraising uh, stint in California. I can't understand why anyone would give this guy a dime. <laughs> but it shows you that not only have the, uh, the, the dumb gotten dumber, but the smart have gotten dumber. And we also know that from the SAT scores. Because if you look at the SAT scores, the number of people, the number of students who now score at the highest level 
is half of what it was, say, in 1970. And the number who score at the bottom has doubled. So the smart are getting dumber, and the dumb are getting dumber. <laughs> and all of this is contrived by John Dewey and friends, and of course it's going on today and will continue as long as the American people tolerate it. Now what can we do about it? I've just completed writing a new book, which I hope will be published soon. The title of the book is How Liberal Utopians Have Turned Public Education into a Criminal Enterprise. <laughs> if that doesn't wake up people, I don't know what will. But you see, we also have to awaken us smart people. You know, we've got to get, we've got to be moving because they are taking this country away from us faster than we can stop them. You know, that's the problem. And how do we organize to stop them? Well, one of the ways, of course, is to join the John Birch Society. I have to say that, you know, for how. <laughs> but another way, of course, is to get those people out of Congress. You see, there are 500, I think it's 535 people the President, the uh, House of Representatives, the Senate, and the Supreme Court who rule 300 million people. And they are doing the lousiest job possible. I mean, I can't think of a dumber crowd than those who now run America. Take, for example, Markey. Have you heard of Markey? Yeah. 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 Congressman yeah. 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 was elected senator. Here's a guy who was an, uh, he ran an ice cream truck, I think, or his father did, or something like that. But he's a senator now. I mean, we've got nitwits there, and also ideological nitwits. I enjoy watching some of these, uh, on C-SPAN, some of these congressional hearings. And take for example, look at the IRS. The IRS has become a political organization. They're not interested in, in, in you as a taxpayer. They're only interested in creating socialism. So she takes the Fifth Amendment. The woman in charge 